everybody. God bless you. Listen, <laughs> I am putting together for the very first time, I've been wanting to do this for a while, um, more of a slideshow slash notes so that you can kind of see my thought process of how I study. And I also wanted to be able to let you see scripture so that if you was to go back over this video, you could get your Bible out and you could look up these scriptures and allow the Holy Spirit to um, lead and guide you. Now, if, if there's some mistakes on this video, it's because I'm kind of learning as I go. <laughs> and I'm really happy and surprised we've gotten this far. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to go ahead and get started. But um, the, a few weeks back, as you know, we have been, if you've been on this YouTube channel for a while, we have been uh, talking about um, the prophetic things that the Lord shows me. And this is how basically what I do. I don't just pull something from the Bible and start teaching on it. Um, I, I, I have to, through my prayer time, through my meditation time through with his word, I wait and allow, allow the Lord to show me in a dream or speak to me or give me an open vision and explain to me a piece of something that he's showing me. And then what I do is I take that and I pray into it and then I, t I start going into scripture. And that's where I kind of minister, teach, preach, whatever you want to say from it. Now, my number one, my first gift in my life um, um, is the, the power of prayer. I believe in prayer. I believe in, in having a, a, a prayer life. My second gift that I operate in is through the prophetic gift. Um, but the last few years, I know the last 12 years of my ministry, it's been my heart to be able to take um, the Word of God and make it personal and, and not to just to preach something, but to make it personal and be transformed by it and experience its tangible anointing and it's it's move in my personal life so that I can turn around and testify it to you hey this this works the word works and so that's kind of where all this kind of started so in saying that um, recently I'm not going to recap everything but recently the Lord showed me uh, a vision and I was silver I wasn't wearing silver I was silver. Even my eyes were silver. And I, I, I kept it to myself. I prayed, prayed into it. I didn't know exactly what I was meaning. Of course, I looked up silver and I looked up different things. Um, I didn't know where to go from it. And then two days later, my husband had a powerful prophetic dream to the point where he was downstairs on the couch and he was trying to sh share with me his dream, but he had tears just coming down his face. And halfway through it, it was very detailed. And halfway through it, he said, I looked down and I was metallic. I was silver. I was metallic color. And he said, he said, I wasn't wearing it. My, I had no longer had flesh. I was this and I knew it was like my armor. And I about fell off the, the couch and I was like, um, what did you just say? And then that's when I knew that I was seeing the armor. Now, just like you, when I think about the armor, I, I even in the scriptures we're going to talk about today when it comes to the helmet, there are pieces of the armor that represents different things. And so um, in my mind, I, I picture the armor of God as what you picture the armor of God, um, like the old armor that you would find in a castle somewhere. But again, our ways are not his ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. And so what the pictures I'm showing you on this slide is not what I saw in my vision. 
And the thing about it is when I have a dream, when I have a vision, I can't repent on what I've seen because there's also with the prophetic, there is a knowing, you know that you know. And so, but in saying all that, I still want to go through these pieces and kind of take you down the path that the Holy Spirit took me as I began to read these scriptures. So you're looking at this first slide. When there's eight slides together that we're going to go through in this, but this first slide basically is just the, the title of this, The Armor of God. And um, there's a question there on this slide that says, Are you of the day? <laughs> I know that's an odd question, but it's going to make sense here in just a minute. Are you of the day? And one of the things, I'm going to get my Bible out, one of the things that... Um, has kind of spoke to me uh, for a long time was people ask when I'm on the road and when I'm preaching and doing prayer lines, people I've been asked several times, people will say, you know, will you pray that I will find the perfect will of God for my life? And of course, we've all um, take that as, you know, what is it that we're supposed to be doing for him? And the Father is, even though we have gifts and callings and we are to be busy about his business and be the hands and feet of Jesus, yes, and our ministries and our gifts are, are very, very important. There's a place for them. But Jesus, um, the ultimate goal is he's interested in you. And so um, how are we going to minister to others when we're not free in our own lives? And so it's a process. Even Paul said, I die daily. You know, I, I, I'm trying to attain my salvation. I'm, try, I'm trying to move towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. And so it's a, it's a process that has to take place. And so um, when people ask me about the will of God, I have to kind of go back and think, of course, I think of Romans 12, and 12 is a number that you really need to pay attention to um, um, this year, this brand new year. This is the first day of January 1st, 2024. Happy New Year, by the way. Uh, but you're going to probably hear a lot about the number 12 in this year, and it's 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 the government of God, the God's, God's governmental. It's governmental of, of the soulless realm, aligning your... Your thoughts, your soul with his. Right? So um, uh, Romans 12 talks about the transformed mind. And it says that is to prove the good, acceptable, the perfect will of God in your life. But I like to always go back to the very beginning, which was in Genesis. And I've, I've read this scripture before, but in Genesis 1... Verse 26, um, he said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have authority. And so I felt the Holy Spirit tell me a while back that his will, this was before the fall. This is before uh, Eve was deceived in the garden. His perfect will, his plan um, was that his creation, man, would stay in the image and likeness of the Godhead, be a, a representation of who he was. And so I believe that that was his will. And so, but, but when sin came upon the earth and then we were born into it, then we now have to spend our days crucifying this flesh, following in the steps and the teachings of Jesus, crucifying our flesh, decreasing in ourselves, increasing in him, so that we can one day attain not, uh, we don't want to stand before him with our flesh, but we want to stand before him fully armored, mirroring him. When he sees me, he needs to see himself, not Ronna Harrison, right? Ronna Harrison needs to die. I'm talking about spiritual death, okay? Ronna Harrison's flesh is nothing but filthy rags. Ronna Harrison needs to be transformed by the renewing of her mind. 
to prove the perfect will of God for her life. So that's how that goes. And so this first slide is the armor of God. We're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. Are you of the day? So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Let me see how to do this. Oh, and I did it. Um, the helmet of salvation, if you turn to your Bibles in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 17, go back there. Okay. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And you see a picture of the helmet there, and you see the picture. I don't know if I can move me out of the way, but I'm sorry that my picture's in the way. Of um, This is going to be a picture of the whole armor. Um, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles means the craftiness of the enemy. And so it did not say that you're not going to be um, attacked. It doesn't, it doesn't say the enemy is going to leave you alone. It says he's coming. He's crafty. He's after you. The whole armor is for you to be able to stand against it when he does come, right? For we, hear me, please make a mental note of this for this year. <laughs> for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That's one thing we're against. That's against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. Come on. I don't know where my camera is. Rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? We're not just fighting an enemy, one enemy. He says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not in war with one another. There's a lot of people on social media right now using social media platforms to say, well, he said and she said and they did and I can't believe. Listen, if you are spewing out your mouth an accusation, even if they, you have the facts, you are being used by Satan because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. If, if an accusation, if a thought comes into your mind, this is why we need the helmet of salvation, okay? If a thought is coming into your heart, that is not love, that is not peace, that is not joy, that is not long-suffering, that is not his heart, and then you dwell on that, or you're tormented by that, and then you allow it to come out your mouth, or you type it on a Facebook post, that is a number one sign. You do not have the helmet of salvation on your head. <laughs> you are not under this protection. You are being used. You're listening to the voices in the city. You're listening to the voices of your temple. You're emotional. You're tossed to and fro. And I'm going to say something else, and this is going to hit home. And this is not just for y'all. This is for me, too. This is also for me. In that government of the mind, Romans 12, you get down to one. There's verse 1, verse 2. If you get down to verse 3, it says one of the things that keeps you from becoming that living sacrifice, this keeps you from being transformed by the renewing of your mind. This one thing I'm getting ready to say right here will keep you from having this helmet, okay? Your thoughts are supposed to be the thoughts of Christ. Your, your words are supposed to be speaking life and not death. But this is what keeps us from having it. You think more highly of yourself, more highly of yourself than you should, if an accusation comes in your head towards something, even if you got proof in your hand or a, 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 a torment or anything that's not of Jesus, and then you, uh, you post it or you begin to speak on it or you begin to, you're, in other words, you're creating what Satan is feeding you because he's open to your soulless realm there's no helmet of salvation he can come right on in to this 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 open door and what happens is you are allowing um his facts 
to become your truth and your flesh will begin to feed off of it. He said the death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love the fruit thereof will love it. Your flesh, because the reason why your flesh will like, well, I'm, you know, I can't believe that they are saying this and I can't believe da, 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 and all this stuff. And what's happening is the reason why you're hurt in the first place and the reason why you are feeling the way you feel is because you think more highly of yourself than you do your brother. Come on. You think more highly of yourself than you do your neighbor. And that is number one proof you don't have the armor on. And you are being attacked by a crafty devil. Devils powers, principalities, darkness of the world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And that that that's why we have to know our word. If if you get a thought or an image that is not a representation of who he is and you linger that means you are taking communion. You're listening to the wrong voice. And then if you post it out, speak it out your mouth, write it out, type it out, and you put it out like that, then you've just made, you've, you've just come, you just took communion with the enemy. You're listening to the wrong voice. There's voice, the Bible says there's voices in the city, voices in the temple, and then there is the voice of thy Lord God. This helmet of salvation that we're talking about, the putting on this helmet the salvation is talking about salvation is what deliverance healing being made whole so this this supernatural helmet keeps your mind your heart your heart what a man thinketh in his heart so is it keeps your heart upon him and even when people come against you and even when thoughts in the, of your past come and the enemy reminds you, he's the accuser of the brother comes. When you have that helmet of salvation on, you're able to cast that, those thoughts down. And you're, act, and you're able to, to begin to transform and begin to recall what the word of the Lord says. And that's how you can pray for your enemies. This is how you can bless those that curse you. It's only, you can, can't do it without the helmet. Okay, so let's keep going. So the helmet, if you look over to the side, is the protection of your soul. How? By being sober. By being sober. And we're going to talk about that. The helmet of salvation is knowing his word that you are healed, you are delivered, and you are made whole. Jesus made a way of escape. So that we can be. So yeah, but Sister Ron, the doctor said that I have stage 3 cancer. That is a fact. It's not your truth. The helmet of the atonement. what The price that was paid. The knowing. The dwelling. The remaining. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, uh, abide under the shadow of the mighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge my fortress in him i will trust that's the helmet that's part of that helmet okay so let's see what we have here okay and gets high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god we're going to talk about all that that ye may be able to withstand the evil day having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to talk about all of these, not today, but in different videos. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're going to talk about that. I have an open vision. And I'll share about that. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Above all the pieces. We're going to talk about that shield. And... This is part of the above all. <laughs> all right. Take the helmet of salvation. So you can say that above all, take the helmet of salvation. 
the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that last line of Ephesians there says, and above all, no matter what, no matter what you think, no matter what you do, no matter what you call yourself, no matter what your gifts are, you must take on this, the mind of Christ and have the, the word of God, the word of God, that sword of the spirit is what transforms the heart of man. This is the helmet. And this is how healing manifests. You're not looking for a healing. Jesus is not going to the whipping post for you again. He fulfilled it. He delivered you. He's already made a way of escape. He said, I am the truth. I am the way and I am the life. This is the armor. Let's go to the next slide. Back here. This, this word means, the verb of that is to mean uh, be and unmovable he said upon this rock he said i'm going to change your name because you have you because of your communion i'm going to change your name name means nature i'm changing you from simon Berjona to peter and upon peter means the rock the rock means be unmovable what is unmovable remain dwell remember psalms 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place we've already quoted it once that is the dwelling. If he, remember in Romans, if he, the same uh, spirit of God dwelleth, remaineth in you, in your heart. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. It would quick and bring to life your mortal body. So to be immovable, your heart has to be in alignment with his heart. Matthew 16 says, he said to Peter here, he said, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, and Blessed art thou, Simon Berjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. What does he mean? Darkness did not reveal this to you. You are you were created in, as to, in light. The day you're putting upon the helmet, Coming into communion, opening of the eyes and opening the ears has allowed you to have a revelation of who I am. Because see, everybody else said, well, they're comparing you to the prophets. But see, Peter was have, had that helmet of salvation on. His, his eyes were seeing, were being revealed what the Father was. In his ears, he could hear what the word of the Lord was saying. Right? He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto you, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom. We've already talked about that. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide. And Peter, by the end of all things, first, first Peter, by the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober. Here it is again. Be sober and watch into prayer. The Bible reads in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. The kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's attainable. When our, when we, when we are, communion our helmet of salvation is there then what he has done for us has made it attainable to us it's it's within grasp okay because we are children of the day because we are sober to watch here means to guard Guard your eyes, guard your ears, guard your heart, guard, guard this. I want you to see this. Unto means to towards, among, direction. A point reached or entered concerning a place. This is the example that was in the Strong's flying. I'm not even making this up. Let me go to this next one. 
Remember when the Lord spoke to me and said it was time for the flyers? And I asked the Lord, I said, who are the flyers? And he said, those that can hear and see me at the same time. Those that can hear and see me at the same time. And my vision that day was my husband and I, we were flying. Of course, our arms were not like Superman here. <laughs> this is the only one I could find. I'm sorry. But they were, they, they were beside us. We were like rockets. And there was the angel of the Lord had like a sketching, like a pencil drawing in front of me. And everything the father was speaking, we could see it too. Those that are have this helmet of salvation, their hearts are in alignment with truth. Even, that doesn't mean that the craftiness of the enemy is not going to come. But the those that have that helmet, they know how to cast down these imaginations. They don't. They don't participate in accusations. They don't participate in the craftiness of the enemy. It's time for the flyers who can see it and hear at the same time. This is to un prayer. The, the unto prayer in the scripture, we are in the new day. We must be sober of a sound mind. I'm missing some of my notes here, but again, this is the first time for me to do this. So I'm sure you're going to bear with me. Those who are of the day, but of the times of the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon the earth and travail upon a woman with child that they should not escape. This is the same scripture that was on the other slide, but I carried it over. You, let's go on down. You are children of the light. Okay. Yeah, this is the same one. So I'm, I'm just repeating it here so that you can have it. Again, this is my first time to do this, so bear with me. And then our last slide, these videos, I'm going to also try to keep under 30 minutes. And we're at 27 minutes now, so we're getting ready to close. And I already talked about this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When it says Spirit, it means the prophetic side of God, the prophetic voice of God moved. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. This is verse 3, and this is why I wrote it down for you. 3 means divine completeness, perfection. The Hebrew letters that talk about this word day is Vav, Vav, and Semek. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Which is Jesus' light coming down to us, or his arm extended. The Semek is an endless cycle. Do you see that? That, that word, it's the Vav and then the Semek, but the Semek is a marriage. It means communion. Like a, it also is like a ladder that connects the lower to the higher. It is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coming together. It's an intimacy. So this, when God said he called it light day, he called us into this day. He called us in to him coming down to us with his arm stretched out, making who he was, what he represented attainable to us, and us coming in alignment, that helmet of salvation keeps us in an endless cycle of dwelling, marriage, and communion. No matter how much darkness there is, the Father already spoke. He's already prophesied a way of escape for us. Day just for a fun note, because we were talking about that number three is divine completeness. It means God's perfection. Day in the Bible is broken up into three also. The evening, the morning, and noon. You'll find this in Psalms 55, 17. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray. What is prayer? Prayer is His Word. His Word spoken. His words that that's, we're prophesying back to Him. That is that that's also that endless cycle. Prophesying into our atmosphere, prophesying into our situation what the word of the Lord has said for us. And cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. We are the light 
not the darkness. Knowing the truth frees us. This is our hope in our salvation. This is the helmet. God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to our, our next slideshow.